and the one e and the two e and the no, maybe. You know what? I'm done with this. Time for video games. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? Oh, I, I'm, I'm just playing video games. Cuss, cuss, what are you doing, bro? You should be practicing right now. I can take some free time and play some video games. Like, come on. You know what, bro? Keep going through your tunnels and driving this stupid car. You're wasting your time. Look, just because we're born in two different generations doesn't mean you can tell me that I can't play my video games, okay? You're wasting your time. So annoying. <laughs> No, no, I'm playing. I'm in the middle of a game. No. Go practice. Nah, bro, you're not them, bro. You got your own story. There's a couple of things that are gonna get you better at this thing. PS5 is not one of them. The main things you wanna work on as a trombonist. In today's world, in all seriousness, break it down to five main things. Articulations, your sound and your tone, playing by ear and transcribing, your upper register, and your knowledge around the horn. And some of those things can go hand in hand as well. And that's why we do things like scales, because scales can tackle a lot of things in one exercise. So a lot of people will practice for like a long period of time, like three, four, five hours. And like, you can do that, but you don't have to. You know, you can practice for one hour a day and get enough done in that period if it's really, really good practice time. So if you don't want to use your phone, that is perfectly fine. You don't have to. Get a book, you know, write your stuff down on notes, and note, and notepads, and notebooks and stuff. Things like the Arvin book for trombonists. Probably like the most beneficial book that you could ever buy, okay? When I studied with Wycliffe Gordon, back when I was in high school, he recommended me get this book. He told me I'd be using it until I'm 30. I'm not 30 yet, and I'm still using this book. I'm not sponsored by this book. This book is like a universal book that you'll see in college and everyone will use it. But basically like, if you don't know what to practice, this is a great place to start. Get yourself one of these, it's really cheap, and go through, and then it just starts out with like, whole notes and half notes and just starting like if you're a beginner this is great but then you can kind of just go page by page utilizing the stuff that you've been learning from these books like utilizing like scales and arpeggios then you find a song first step figure out what key the song's in is it major or is it minor what key is the song in? okay what minor scale now do i need to know so i can play the minor scale over the song so now the song's playing i'd be like okay it's in c minor well i know my c minor scale all i'm going to do is turn on the record and just play that c minor scale over the record Maybe I'll do it in thirds, so. Now I want to like change up some rhythms, you know, start improvising. You just take those notes and just kind of mix and match them around. That's improvising. You know, that's a little solo. That's a, that's a mini solo. Next step, transcribe someone's solo. So someone plays a solo in that same key, and then you're like, I'm gonna play their solo. Then you take some of their language and you make it your own. They take a lick, put it through all 12 keys. Easy way to get better. And then you say, okay, I'm gonna play that in all 12 keys. And you go through all 12 keys with that lick. So we're gonna take you through some exercises that I do and we can kind of just go from there. It's important to have a good routine, right? Whoa, how'd this get here? Take that phone and you just chuck it across the room. If you wanna use your list of like what you're gonna be practicing for the day, it's highly recommended. I would always warm up. You don't wanna just jump in anything right, right away. You know, you can really do anything with it. Long tones, just holding out notes. And I'll also practice on my large board as well. This is a large board, believe it or not. It doesn't have a trigger, but it's a large board.
all the basic things that you should be practicing. I mean, scales are huge, especially if you're doing jazz stuff, but in general, like scales are everything. You know, you want to divide up your practice time. So, you know, you could play something like that and just kind of get for like a reference, right? So then you can be like, okay, so that's in like C minor, right? So now I'd probably try to do some type of scale. Harmonic minor scale would work great over like something like Blue Bossa, right? So harmonic minor scale, you play the C harmonic minor. That's a great way to just start the solo right off the bat. Essentially like, you're just playing a descending scale, and that's that's already starting your your your, um, your solo. You only have to think of, of, like, of like a lick or a line, and then you can kind of add your ideas to it. So, so say I'm going to start with that C. It, it kind of gives you like a path to um, like kind of expand on. So. You know, I would do a lot of stuff like that. You know, scales are really everything. You could even try, you can even like, if you're, if you're still not good at improvising, you're still trying to get better at improvising, you could just take an entire solo playing only scales. Only scales like one, two, three, four, five. One, three, four, five, you know? So, so practicing in today's world is very, very difficult to say the least. Very, very difficult. However, it's not all difficult. If you know what you're doing, if you have a good routine, you know, pen and paper, write out your practice schedule, practice routine, or what you're gonna be practicing. You know, I think one of the things that I've done over the years that's really helped me is like, instead of going to my phone and writing stuff in my phone, get a notepad and just write it down on a notepad. Try to use your phone as least, the least amount you possibly can. You know, I understand that like certain times you're gonna need your phone when you're practicing, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're limiting that as much as possible because, you know, it's it's one of those things that can distract you very, very quickly and very, very easily. You know, you'll be practicing, you'll be practicing a lick or a line or a new idea, and then something pops up in your phone, and next thing you know, you're checking your emails and DMs and messages, and in order to like keep the momentum going up when you're practicing, you know, just, limit distractions you know you worry about phones and laptops and devices if you can't if you know that they're going to distract you put them in the other room don't have them with you when you're practicing you know find a place that's quiet find a place where you can be alone where you're not going to get distracted um you know some people even like to go outside and like find a quiet place if it's warm weather and it's a nice day out and just practice outside and like enjoy the conditions you know that's a great thing as well so you don't feel like you're limited to any kind of thing but at the same time, you want to make sure that the practice time is really, really good because there's nothing worse than putting time into something and not getting results because you're not doing it the right way.